Do you have a friend that loves whiskey, loves a good German whiskey, and you have no idea what to give them for Christmas? Stay tuned and find out. Alright guys, welcome back to Bottled and Bond. Today we're going to discuss the top gift ideas for a whiskey drinker according to Bottled and Bond. But before we hit that topic, I'm sure you're pretty much eager to uh, find out what Ozzy recommends for many different categories of whiskeys, depending on the friend that you want to give this gift to for the holidays. Before that, I want to talk about a question that I get asked from time to time and I want to be able to answer it the way I would answer it or the way you should answer it or maybe prepare you for somebody that's going to answer it the way that I'm about to answer it. What kind of whiskey do you like? Comparison. So the reason that this becomes a problem is because when, when you ask somebody, you know, do you, you drink whiskey? Yes, so what kind of whiskey do you drink? You know, you don't assume that all whiskey is the same. Obviously before, uh, I've also mentioned in the channel just the difference between bourbon, scotch, Irish, this, that, and the third. How it's aged, how it's made, how it's smoked, how it's not smoked. But it breaks over into so many different categories. You can't ask somebody what's your favorite whiskey. You ask them what kind of whiskey you like. You need to remember that when it comes to the United States, you have American whiskey, not bourbon. Then you have American single malt. Then you have bourbon, which meets the qualifications of being called a bourbon. Then you have bourbon that's bottled in bond bourbon. Then you have high rye bourbon. Then you have high wheat bourbon. You also have high proof bourbon. Then you have rye whiskey, which is not bourbon. And then you have wheat whiskey, which is not bourbon. These are whiskeys that are made with 95, 100% rye or 95, 100% wheat, which believe it or not, the whiskey tastes different. Now let's talk about scotch. You have scotch, single malt scotch. You also have peated scotch. But to my palate, I've had two different types of peated scotch, which is the Isla Peat from the Isle of Isla, and I've also had the Highland Park Peat, which is Orcanian Peat from the Orkney Islands. Then you have Japanese whiskey. Then you have liqueurs, which sometimes these liqueurs claim to be a, a specific bourbon or whiskey, which if it's below the 40% threshold, it is not. You got scotches that come from Campbelltown Lowlands, which believe it or not, pack a different flavor when it comes to the single malt scotch. And then you have Canadian whiskey, and you also have blended scotch. And not to forget Irish whiskey, along with some whiskeys that come from Ireland that are actually peated. So as you can see, there's many different categories that go into describing, you know, what's your favorite whiskey. You don't just ask somebody that. You ask them and you dive in into those channels. Oh, do you like scotch? Yes. Do you like regular scotch or do you like peated scotch? Well, I actually like peated scotch. Okay, well, do you like Isla peated or do you like Highland Park, which has way different flavors. You know, do you like bourbon? Yes, well, what kind of bourbon do you like? You, you drink the budget kind, you know, do you drink bottled and bond bourbons, high rye bourbons, high, high uh, wheat bourbons, uh, high proof bourbons? There's many different questions that come with it. Nonetheless, today on Bottled and Bond, I actually want to talk to you guys about what whiskeys I recommend on just some of those categories because I had not had a plethora of different whiskeys. A lot of people are making videos on their channels or on their websites and whatnot, and they're saying this is the top 10 whiskeys for the holidays or for 2020 or top five. And it's according to them, and you need to understand that the palette is subjective. I've mentioned this many, many times. The palette is very subjective. And knowing that, you need to remember that what I like is not gonna be what you like, but taking somebody's consideration is usually proof that somebody else out there may or may not like it, which means it gives you an unf gives you that good chance that you are running a risk, but maybe you're getting it right. Bam, let's start with bourbon. Okay, so personally, my recommendation for the holidays is this. For a high proof bourbon, I recommend the Old Forester Prohibition style. It's coming in at 115 proof. This bottle may range anywhere between 55, 65, maybe even 70 bucks. A little lower than that, my regular bourbon, my top one, top rated recommended bourbon, is the Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Come in at maybe 50, 55 bucks, depending on where you're at. One of the best gifts you could ever give somebody when it comes to bourbon. If you're more on the budget side, you may want to look into virgin bourbon. Sweet, delicious notes, 
highly recommend it, 12, 13 bucks. It'll be a great gift, trust me. Now let's talk bottled and bond bourbons. Personally, New Riff just came out with their bottled and bond, well, I, I don't know when it came out, but it's fairly new to me from this year, and I absolutely love it. Their bottled, bottled and bond is classic. I love it, highly recommend it. You're looking at about maybe 40 bucks, give or take. Now the Colonel E.H. Taylor, coming from the uh, Buffalo Trace Distillery, that bottle of the Mon is amazing, except it's gonna run you about 70, 75 bucks. Now let's talk American whiskeys that are technically not bourbon, even though some may classify as bourbon. Here we have another bottle of the Mon, which I highly recommend, except this is technically not bourbon, even though it could be bourbon. So that's the George Dickel Bottled in Bond whiskey. Amazing on the palate. You're looking at 35, maybe 40 bucks, give or take, depending on where you're at. Gold Bar is an American whiskey that I've had in the past. Do I like it? Uh, I, I, I want to say yes, but it's just whiskey. It's just sweet, easy to drink, maybe for somebody who's just starting with American whiskey and you would like for them to transition. You're looking at about maybe 35 bucks, more or less, give or take. Another American whiskey is Blackened from uh, Metallica. This is amazing. Great notes, great uh, blended whiskey, and I thought it was, you know, it was good. Uh, this one, to my knowledge, is coming in at about 50 bucks, more or less. Now let's dive into Scotch. Yeah, all right, so when it comes to scotch, I personally recommend Monkey Shoulder. Monkey Shoulder is maybe 30, 35 bucks. A great dram of a scotch. Highly recommend that as a gift. Aberfeldy, the 12 year, was given to me by uh, Adam earlier this year, and by God, I'm telling you, Aberfeldy 12 packs a punch when it comes to all these different flavors, and it's pretty low on the market. Uh, I've seen it for as low as 35, 40 bucks. I want to say as high as 50, but it's Good gift. The Glenfiddich 14 is a, a whiskey that I had earlier this year and, well, a couple months ago, and I fell in love with it. I mean, this whiskey trumped a bunch of other whiskeys, a bunch of other scotches that I thought were amazing. Singleton 15, although I don't have it here, is another one that I highly recommend. This one should be about maybe 45, 50 bucks, and the Singleton 15 should be about maybe 60, 65 bucks, give or take. And if you're a scotch guy, your buddy is a scotch guy as well, and you got the dough, to make it move just like that, then I highly recommend the Balvini 21 year. Except this one's gonna run you on sale for $199 and maybe regular price $230, $235, give or take, depending on where you're at. But it is amazing. Now, when it comes to American single malt, I've only had a couple Copper Fox and Rua. Um, I've had another one, forget the name, but I don't recommend it. I do recommend the Rua. Rua is amazing. This American single malt, I'm surprised that the United States is making such a fine comparison to a scotch with the weather that we have here, but Rua really trumps it. Rua is coming in at maybe, man, I thought I saw it one time as cheap as 40 bucks, but I've also seen it as much as 50 or 60 bucks. Rua, good gift for somebody who enjoys American single malt. Now, if the scotch drinker in your life, or your buddy, is somebody who enjoys uh, whiskeys from, or scotch from the Lowlands or Campbellton and all that, Akintoshin, uh, American Oak, you know, it's, it, so here's the thing, the distilleries that I found and I've seen reviewed and I've reviewed myself or I've heard of or I talked to somebody about, the ones that come from the Lowlands and Campbelltown and all that, they tend to pack a little bit of a musty, leathery, it's a different, you think you're picking up peat, but you're not picking up peat, and it's, it's, it's just different. So that's why I made that into its own category, separating away from all the other single malt scotch within the uh, different regions. Akintoshin, American Oak, good gift. Coming in at about maybe 50, 60 bucks, give or take, depending on where you're at. Now, if the person you want to give a gift to likes single malt scotch, but they're highly into peated, I do recommend the Lagavulin 16 that I reviewed here last time. Highly recommend it, but like I said, you're gonna be paying anywhere between 75, 80, 90, close to 100 bucks sometimes. But it's a good, it's a good Peter whiskey from the Isle of Isla. Another one from the Isle of Isla, lower in price, you're looking at maybe 50 bucks now, it's the Arbeck 10 year. Really fell in love with it, I thought it was better than Lafroy, so if they uh, enjoy Isla Peter whiskey, definitely Arbeck, 50 bucks, good gift, right? Now, if they prefer a different type of peat and they're into Highland Park, this is a great whiskey. The Highland Park 12 is from the Orkney Islands. So the uses are or Kenyan peat, and it is by far my favorite peaty whiskey. But like I said, from Isla, I got my own, and from them, Highland Park 12 year. And the last category that I want to touch base on is rye. All right, when it comes to rye, Angel's Envy finished rye is by far my favorite. Here's my thing though. So this is gonna run you anywhere between 85 
to about a hundred bucks depending on where you're at. This is a great gift for somebody that loves rock. But keep in mind, this has more dense, deeper, thicker and heavy bodied, sweet, delicious notes when it comes to the nose and it comes to your palate. I freaking love this rye, but it is different from other ryes that I've had. There's other ryes that I've had that you get more of that herbal, you get more of that, um, a little bit of uh, leafy, you know, maybe a little grassy, and you still get a couple sweet notes here and there, but that, that herbal is very dominant when it comes to the rye. This one, although it has that, it has so many more notes and it's more expensive. But if you have the money and this is a special person to you that you're going to want to give a gift to during Christmas, during the holidays, highly recommend Angel's Envy Finish Rye. Now, I didn't touch all the categories that I technically wanted to touch. And like I said, these recommendations for gifts are my recommendations here on Bottled and Bond. If you have your own recommendations, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think, which category you would have switched around or replaced based on your palate, every palate is subjective. I hope this helps you guys out, pick out those whiskeys. For the most part, all the whiskeys that I put on this video today are readily accessible for the most part. But like I said, you got your budgets and you got your high price, so just depending, you know, what, is, what does your wallet look like? And how much this person really means to you? Because if they don't mean shit to you, then stick to the 10, $15 bottles. There's a few other ones I didn't mention, like the uh, Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. That comes in at maybe 16, 17 bucks, along with Old Forester 86. That's like 17, 18 bucks. Highly recommended, low budget whiskeys to give during the holidays. I'm Ozzy. This is Buffalo Trace from Buffalo Trace Distillery in Kentucky. And this is Bottled and Bond. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Cheers.